Hi everybody, welcome to our Year 10 subject selection presentation for uh, 2021 and 2022. It's hard to believe that our Year 10s are heading into this part of their school journey. Today, uh, what I'd like to do is just talk to you a little bit about um, the process and the pathways for students coming through into our senior school, into Year 11 and 12. And, and I have a PowerPoint presentation as well, which should help in terms of that information sharing. We will uh, send you a copy of the PowerPoint along with a link to the electronic handbook uh, for the Year 10s. So bear with us while we go through this PowerPoint and, and work through some of the choices for our students uh, coming through the system. So some things to think about for students as they are moving into Year 11 and 12 and choosing subjects. One of the things that we do spend quite some time talking to the students about is what is it that they enjoy doing and, and where are they likely to experience success uh, in year 11 and 12. What we don't want to do is make this much more difficult and, than it already is and what we would like students to think about is their pathway beyond school and that's sometimes tricky when you're 15 and you don't know what you want to do. So we encourage students to think about what they'd like to do just for um, this coming six months and then for six months beyond that and so forth so that they're making some choices in those ways. And we're also encouraging students to think about where their capacity is at the moment and we know that and things don't change overnight in terms of their um, study habits what they're interested in doing and, and their capacity to, to work hard, harder or longer. And so we need to be realistic about all of those things too. And, and we also encourage our students, um, as embarrassing as we can be, us parents and guardians, to be talking to people that they know, the grown-ups in their lives, to get some advice about uh, jobs that they may already have, their life experiences, and to be talking those things through. So I really encourage um, you to be talking to your Year 10 student about um, what it is that they would like to do. Remembering also it's their journey um, and we really need to be working together with them to encourage them to make good choices. Um, the other thing that we like to um, encourage students to do is to talk to people who are already working in particular job areas and some of that's happening through our careers program here at school and to think about the sorts of entry requirements that are required for courses but also to be really conscious with that that there are there's been big changes to entry requirements for university courses for example, um, back in the olden days when um, I went through university or when some of the rest of us went through uni, there were prerequisites for courses like medicine. Some of those don't exist anymore and it's really important that you are aware as well as your child is aware that what the prerequisites are. So that might impact some choices to do, particularly with maths and science courses. So just do some of that investigation. Um, the other thing, as far as I'm concerned, is that there's lots of people here to, at school to help. So please make good use of that support. For next year, we will have Renee O'Donnell and um, Angela Ferreira on board as our Vet and Careers Coordinators. So there's lots of support in that area, along with your child's head of house, the um, head of sub-school, so Mr Mark Bonham, and, and the heads of learning area. And students will sometimes come to their teachers and ask about uh, which course they should be doing, please do pay attention to the advice of your child's teacher. What we want for your child is great success. Um, what we don't want is for them to struggle unnecessarily through a course that they may not enjoy or they may not be capable of. So keep an eye on all of those people, as you can see on the PowerPoint. And Included in the PowerPoint is the email address and telephone number for each of those people. So please keep, keep in contact with them. What students are starting to achieve by virtue of their first step into year 11 
is the WA Certificate of Education and, and um, I do refer to this presentation as being a little bit deaf by acronym um, because there are an awful lot of acronyms as students head into Year 11 and 12. So the Certificate of Education is for every student regardless of whether they are on a, a VET general pathway or whether they're on an ATAR pathway. And while we're there in terms of acronyms, VET is the acronym for Vocational Education and Training and ATAR uh, is the acronym for the Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank and is nothing more than a number that is allocated to students in order to give them, offer them a place at university. Um, and those students will, as part of achieving their WACE, need to meet a series of prerequisites in order to achieve that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Each student at the end of Year 12 will achieve a WASA, a WA Statement of Student Achievement, and that's just a record of the work that they have done in Year 11 and 12 in terms of their courses. Um, we, the school, are um, overseen in the delivery of those courses by the School Curriculum and Standards Authority, the SCSA, and they're also the body who look after external exams at the end of the year for our ATAR students. And really what we need to be very mindful of here at school is that students have um, equal opportunity to achieve, that, that the courses are delivered in a fair and equitable way to each of the students. Um, so I'm going to start looking now at three different pathways from which you might like to choose in making decisions about your um, journey through Year 11 and 12. The one I'll start with is the ATAR pathway. Um, and students, I think the thing that I want to start with actually before I hop into that is that each of these pathways are equally valuable. And I really want to make that point right from the start. I think there's a lot of talk about you need to be doing ATAR to get into university. And yes, that's the most direct pathway to university but there are other ways to get there. And the VET and general courses are particularly valuable for students who want to pursue a vocational pathway. So I'd really encourage you to make sure that you are looking at each of the pathways through um, the lens of what's right for my child. And so the ATAR pathway is really used to determine a rank um, for each student to achieve a pathway into university. Students must do at least five ATAR courses um, to follow the ATAR pathway and the top four scores from those courses are what is used to determine their ATAR at the end of that two-year journey. And what happens with that score is that it goes to TISC, which is the Tertiary Institutions Service Centre, after exams and that score is used to um, determine what courses students might be able to pursue at university. The general pathway um, involves courses for students and allows them to follow their passions without having to sit an exam at the end of the course. The general courses are um, do involve an EST which is an externally set task which is worth about 15% of the course, and students are required to do that in year 12. But apart from that, the general courses are really valuable and really helpful for students. If your child chooses the general pathway, they must be doing at least five general courses, and then they might like to top up with a sixth general course or with a VET course. And so that's worth looking at um, too. The, Last option is the VET pathway, Vocational Education and Training pathway, whereby students must achieve a certificate two or higher um, in order to complete their schooling on this pathway. And there are lots of options in the VET pathway, which I'll talk a little bit more about as we move through our presentation. You can see an, an on the PowerPoint here that there are breadth and depth requirements for students um, moving through their WACE. They must complete 20 course units or the equivalent over the course of year 11 and 12. 
um, and they must do English and much to the joy of all of the English teachers here at school and um, they seem to rock up some of the maths teachers. <laughs> Students don't have to do maths though we very much recommend that they do continue to do maths right through to the end of year 12 and as part of that prerequisite requirement to achieve the WACE students must do a course from list A um, which is our English and Humanities pathway and they must do at least one course from list B which is our Maths, Science, Technologies pathway. After they've got one each of list A and list B subjects they may top up the rest of their six courses with whatever um, courses they like to do but they must have those two. And in year 12 students must do 10 course units and if my maths serves me correctly that means they need to do at least 10 course units in year 11 and of the and when we talk about course units what we're talking about is a semester's worth of work so they will do semester one and then semester two in each year of um, year 11 and 12. of those we can only count four from VET or endorsed programs in year 11 and we can only count four from VET or endorsed programs in year 12. So we need to be conscious about the number of VET or endorsed programs students are doing in year 11 and 12. Students must also achieve a, at least 14 C grades, that is those are semesterised C grades over year 11 and 12 and eight of those must come from, sorry, beg your pardon, six of those must come from year 12. That sounds on the face of it to be very simple, um, but sometimes what we see is if students have made poor choices in year 11 about the courses that they're doing, they really struggle to achieve those C grades in year 11 and then find it quite hard to make up those C grades for year 12. So hence our focus on making sure we get our course choices right at the very start. Um, you may also have heard of a uh, literacy and numeracy test called the OLNA, which is the Online Literacy and Numeracy Assessment. Students have the opportunity to um, meet this requirement in year nine by achieving Band 8 or higher in NAPLAN or they'll sit the ulna test in reading, writing and numeracy in year 10 and they can meet that requirement then. If they don't quite get through that uh, assessment in year 10, they have other opportunities, as you can see on the slide here, they have other opportunities, a second opportunity in year 10 and then two opportunities in year 11 and in year 12 to achieve Nuts, and that's demonstrating a minimum literacy or, and or numeracy requirement in order to achieve their WACE. And the other thing that you need to be conscious of is if your child is choosing ATAR courses, they must sit the examination at the end of the year of year 12 in order to complete the course. So sometimes students will say to me, well, I want to do that course, but I don't want to sit the exams then the ATAR is not the right choice for you. So please just be aware of that. And there's some information in the PowerPoint which further breaks down those three pathways. And I'll let you have a look at that when we send that PowerPoint home to you. Um, some examples now in the PowerPoint, if you'd like to follow along with us, having a look at the ATAR pathway you can see on this first slide that outlines the ATAR pathway that this student in year 11 is doing six ATAR subjects and continues with those six ATAR subjects through into year 12. You can also see the note at the bottom of the slide which indicates that maths methods, in this case for this student and Japanese, both of those courses uh, attract a 10% bonus to be added to the student's ATAR. So even if they don't count those subjects as part of their top four in the calculation of their ATAR, 
they still attract a 10% of the course score that the student achieves in that course, which is added to their ATAR at the end. So if you are um, prevaricating, you've got the wobbles up about taking uh, more difficult maths, or you're not sure about pursuing your language into um, year 11 and 12, that might be something that informs your decision. The next slide here looks at a student who is um, taking six ATAR courses in year 11 and then to support their study in year 12 decides to reduce that to five ATAR courses and a study line. And this is only available to students who are doing five ATAR courses here at school. So just be conscious of that choice of that pathway if having a study line in year 12 is something that you'd like to pursue. The next example we have here is a combination of ATAR and VET courses. So this student has five ATAR courses and has chosen to pursue a certificate three in music and start that in year 11 and finish it in year 12. So they have a little bit of time where they're pursuing something that is their passion on top of their academic load. And so that's something that you might like to consider on an ATAR pathway. In terms of VET pathways here at GSG, we've got a range of um, options for students and they can pursue those um, by shaping up their choices along the lines of um, a sport and health offering, along the lines of an art and music offering, or looking at business, um, information technology and digital media or hospitality. So there's lots of opportunities for students to follow their passions in this area. And one of the things that I do want to explain about the VET pathway is that students are able to either take a VET course as what we call standalone. So the student just does, for example, Certificate 2 Hospitality here at school. And that is the only um, course that they participate in. The other way to do that in terms of um, pursuing a Certificate 2 is to pursue a Certificate 2 or a Certificate 3 in a format that is called industry specific. And what that means is that the student would do the Certificate 2 course, but we would wrap around an experience in a work placement. That means that they are getting more experience at work at the same time as studying the um, prerequisites or the, the units of competence for that certificate course. So either it's standalone or we do industry specific. The benefit of the industry specific for students, A, is some experience in the workplace and B, their capacity to count that industry specific course as a C grade towards their final achievement of their C grades. So the staff here at school will talk to students about all of that, but just to make some of that language a little bit more clear. And here at school, we offer a Certificate 3 and a Certificate 4 in business. Um, and students who are looking towards doing a Certificate 4 in business in Year 12 may like to pursue with their Head of House and with our Vet and Careers Coordinator a, com a conversation around the capacity for the Certificate 4 to give them the opportunity to use that as a tool for university entrance. And the Certificate 4 is an option for university entrance um, and is worth pursuing if the ATAR pathway is something that is students are finding difficult, particularly by halfway through or by the end of Year 11. We've also, we're also offering a Certificate 2 in Hospitality, a Certificate uh, 3 in Music, a Certificate 2 in Sport and Recreation, and a Certificate 2 in Information, Digital Media and Technology. So each of these is available as standalone or industry specific with the exception of the sport and rec. So just to be conscious that um, the sport and recreation is not available with the industry specific wraparound that I spoke of earlier. Um, so those are a broad range of options. There's also included in the information that's come home to you 
and the types of certificates that are available through South Regional TAFE, our local TAFE here in Albany, and there's a whole range of options for certificate um, study at TAFE, including things like building and construction, light automotive and heavy diesel, clothing and textile productions, tourism, and I'm just listing off just a few. So we are expecting to get an update from TAFE shortly about the courses that will be on offer for 2021, um, and we look forward to sharing those with you as well. TAFE also have a range of pre-apprenticeships available, um, and our Vet and Careers Coordinators can talk to you about some of those. Students in the past have done things like Certificate 2 Kitchen Operations or Certificate 2 Electrotechnology, Certificate 2 in Plumbing. So there's lots of options in those areas too. If students take on a pre-apprenticeship, they do require one day a week in the workplace. So on our PowerPoint now, we have some examples of the VET pathway and the types of uh, courses that students would choose on that pathway. What we do advise for students is that they take um, English General, Maths General, and a Careers and Enterprise, which is a fantastic course for students uh, in preparing them for a vocational pathway. And then we ask them to uh, fill the rest of their timetable with subjects that are really interesting to them and allow them to pursue their passion. So the example here on the PowerPoint is a certificate two in hospitality and outdoor education in general and workplace learning. So you can see this student's got a pretty well-rounded offering. You can also see that um, this, this next student on the PowerPoint who's pursuing a VET pathway but doing that through TAFE actually has seven options on their timetable, seven courses on their timetable. Again, English and Maths General and Careers and Enterprise General. But this student is doing a Certificate 3 in Business and then is also doing a Certificate 2 in Community Services through TAFE for childcare. And that means that they need to do a work placement during the week as well. So, um, and they are going to top up their last choice with a visual art general course. And again, staff are here to talk to students about those options. Um, I'll just skip through to an example on the PowerPoint then about workplace learning with a possible school-based traineeship pathway. And I just want to explain a little bit about the background here. Many of our students are, are keen to pursue a school-based traineeship, um, which is a fantastic option, and it means that they are actually paid for some of their time while they are doing training. But we need to make sure that that pathway will work for the student and for the employer in the first instance. So typically what we would do here is that the student would start in a workplace um, learning environment where they're going into the workplace one day a week and then we start a conversation with the employer about their appetite to take on the student as a school-based traineeship in the longer term and that's really um, up to the employer in terms of the commitment for them about taking on the training of a young person. We've certainly got some people here, even here at school doing school-based traineeships and that's working really well. So um, definitely worth exploring. This student then is doing English, Maths General and Careers and Enterprise General. They're doing an Outdoor Ed and a Cert 3 in Business and then they have their traineeship placement that happens one day a week. And so that's worthwhile looking at. And lastly, in our overview of examples here, we have our general student who's doing English, Maths, Careers and Enterprise and then taking on Visual Art, Outdoor Ed and a Materials Design and Technology would work um, as their other courses. And you can see that this student isn't undertaking any certificate courses. They've chosen to do the general pathway with at least five general uh, courses on their timetable. Really in terms of where to now, and that's the heading for this slide in the PowerPoint, it's about looking at results 
from semester one and part of the reason that we are making um, the decision to undertake this process at this time of the year is to make sure that students have the opportunity to look at how their achievement has gone at the end of semester one and really to sit back and do a little bit of reflection about how am I going, what's realistic in terms of my options and, and how is it that I'm able to apply myself to those courses so that I can do well in each of those courses. Start doing a little bit of um, research and looking into what prerequisites might be at university and then refer to the handbook uh, that we have sent you a link to which has got more information in it. And what happens next is that we ask students to indicate, just give us a first indication of their preferences for courses. And the reason that we do this is that helps inform our planning for timetabling, which is a big undertaking, to make sure that we can um, cater for the needs of those students. So what's really important at this point is for students to be realistic and to give us an indication of what it is that they would prefer to do. So sometimes, just to give you an example, our timetable is actually built around the year 11 preferences. And, and sometimes what we find is that one year, for example, all of the students who were doing physics, wanted to do physics, were also all of our students who wanted to do Certificate 2 in music. And we try to cater for those preferences as much as we can within our timetable. Some schools will do what's called closed gridlines, where they will simply give students the um, options and the combinations of subjects from which they might choose. And, but what we try to do is get a sense from our year, current year 10s as they move into year 11 about what it is that they would like to do and we try to frame that up a little bit for them. Then what will happen is students will uh, give, them, give us their preferences. We will go away and Mrs Turner, our timetable genius, will go away and put together grid lines that look like they will work for the majority of students. And that's the point at which we ask students to make their final choices based on those grid lines. It's really important as part of this preference um, process that students indicate their top preference followed by their next most popular preferences so that if they know that they have to do English but they would infinitely prefer to be doing outdoor ed then that's what we want to see as their top preference is their outdoor ed and um, ranking each of their preferences below that. So that's really important as part of this process. What I do want to point out is just because students have made an indication about their preference, it may be that they are not able to do two of their preferences because they will end up being offered at the same time on the timetable. So there will be some hard decisions to be made. But what we want to do is get a sense first from students about what it is that they prefer to be doing. In the PowerPoint, you will see an example of the document that we give to students to help them make their choices from the available subjects on each line. So you can see the grid on the PowerPoint that has line one to line six at the top and the students need to make a subject choice from each of those lines. And they can't choose two from one line because those two subjects are being offered at the same time. So sometimes that's where the rubber hits the road and there's some tricky decisions to be made. But again, your child's head of house is a really key partner in this process. And the screen grab shows uh, from the PowerPoint shows the software that students will use to indicate their preferences and students will receive an email um, to ask them to log in and make these preferences. So that all happens electronically. Can I really encourage you to keep an eye on your email accounts, students, so that when you get this link to indicating your preferences, you're able to uh, make your preferences known. Sometimes what we get is 
responses like, I didn't get that email and I haven't been able to make my preferences. So at that point, either we can figure out that something's gone wrong in terms of getting that email to you, or it might have been that you've glossed over that email in your inbox. So do keep an eye out for that. And please make sure that you're meeting those deadlines so that we can um, ensure that your preferences go into our thinking. And that form that is completed online will print out as a receipt. And what we'd like to do is see signatures from parents or guardians on there, along with signatures from heads of house, so that we can make sure that um, mum or dad or guardians are aware of the choices that our students are making. So at this point, that is the end of the presentation to take you through the overview of the subject selection. And we will follow up with a um, YouTube live session, which will allow you to link up with us here at school and, and to ask questions. And I really encourage you to be looking at this information now to certainly be in touch with um, Mark Bonin or the heads and or the heads of house for any questions that you have about this process. We really encourage you to join us on the YouTube live. We will send you a link to that session and and we look forward to being able to answer your questions in that session. So please join us then and uh, we look forward to supporting you and your child through their journey through Year 11 and 12. Thank you.